നമസ്കാരം പരിശുദ്ധ ഇഗ്നാത്യോസ് അബ്രഹിം ദിദിയൻ പാത്രിയർക്കിസ് ബാവ ആഗോള സൊറിയാനി സഭയുടെ നൂറ്റി ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്നാമത് പാത്രിയർക്കിസ് സഭാധ്യക്ഷൻ എന്നതിലുപരി ആഗോളതലത്തിൽ തന്നെ സമാധാനത്തിന് വേണ്ടി പ്രവർത്തിക്കുന്ന വലിയ ഇടയൻ മധ്യപൂർവ്വ ദേശത്തെ വലിയ സംഘർഷങ്ങൾക്കിടയിലും സമാധാന ദൂതുമായി ഓടി നടക്കുന്ന പരിശുദ്ധ പാത്രിയർക്കിസ് ബാവ മലയാളത്തെ ഏറെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്ന മലങ്കരയെ അടുത്തറിയുന്ന പരിശുദ്ധ പാത്രിയർക്കിസ് ബാവ തന്റെ ആദ്യ കേരള സന്ദർശനത്തിൽ മനോരമ ന്യൂസിനോട് മനസ്സ് തുറക്കുന്നു Your Holiness, we are privileged to have you as a guest today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me on your uh, Manorama News. The church in Kerala was very eagerly waiting for your patriarchal visit. How does Your Holiness feel to be in Kerala and to see the enthusiasm of the people around? I am indeed very uh, joyful. My heart is full of joy to see our people have been uh, waiting for this visit myself. I know how the people are eager. I was even more eager to come and see them, uh, simply because uh, this is a very dear part uh, of our church on my heart and the heart of every uh, member of our uh, holy city, you know, the Church of Antioch. Uh, being here is being with the family, with our spiritual children, with people who kept the faith, the uh, faith of our forefathers for many centuries and they paid dearly for that. So being here is not only joy for me, it's also a privilege for me to uh, come and see the ordinary people of Kerala, uh, of Malankara, uh, who are uh, uh, happy to, say to see their father, but their father also is very happy to see them. So I thank God for giving me this opportunity to be with our dear spiritual children. Your Holiness comes from Syria, right. which unfortunately happens to be in die of the storm. a uh, new global synonym for terrorism how can your uh, holiness uh, describe the actual situation in syria and iraq especially for the christians and the minorities it's a very unfortunate situation um, this year we are commemorating the 100th anniversary of the massacres and the genocide that uh, struck our people in the former ottoman empire uh, which we call saifo means the sword and What's happening in Syria and Iraq, it reminds us of, of these massacres, of, of, of that great um, calamity that uh, we feel on our people and hundreds of thousands of martyrs were uh, uh, fell victims to that uh, massacre. Today what's happening in Syria, especially, and in Iraq, uh, is not less that, than that, Saifo. Uh, but the only difference is that the whole world is watching today and hearing and very few people are m moved to do anything to help the people there. Not only the Christians, the people of Syria, of Iraq, Christians and Muslims, they are all suffering. They are all suffering at the hands of terrorists. Terrorists from all over the world. Churches have been destroyed, monasteries have been destroyed, schools have been knocked down, uh, clergy have been slaughtered, bishops are kidnapped. We have two of our dear bishops of Aleppo from our Syrian other church and the Greek other church who have been kidnapped for almost 20 months. We know nothing about them. The people of Iraq were driven out of their homes and villages in matters of hours, 150,000 were homeless. I went and visited them four times, and I can tell you it's a big misery, and the whole world should be ashamed of what's happening there, because everybody is seeing, everybody is hearing, but very few people are trying to do something. So I call upon the whole world to, to move quickly to stop the genocide that is taking place right now in, in the Middle East. How is the church caring for the people in the affected area? I think your holiness in person visits the refugees and all. I was there four times in, in Iraq to go and to uh, try to uh, support them, to be with them, to uh, touch their hearts and uh, I pray that the Lord will, will use me and other uh, people to bring some uh, comfort to these people. They are suffering and it's our duty to be with our children who are suffering uh, in, both in Syria and in Iraq and that's the reason why we kept our uh, headquarters in Damascus despite what's happening there and that's why we are still in Damascus. Actually, on my way to Kerala here, 
On Thursday morning, I left Damascus while Damascus was being bombarded by, by dozens of, of missiles and mortars coming from the terrorists on the peaceful uh, quarters and especially the Christian areas of old Damascus. But uh, Your Holiness uh, decided to be in Syria. Yes, I decided because uh, I have to be with my people. If the people are suffering, I have to be with them. I cannot be with them only when they are in comfort and they are uh, 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 they're living uh, comfortably. I have to be with them, especially when they are suffering. I'm not better than any of them. And uh, wherever the flock is, there should uh, shepherd be also. I think Your Holiness is a proud Syrian. I'm a proud Syrian, yes, both Christian and Syrian. I'm a proud... Uh, uh, member of, of, of the community because our community um, contributed a lot to the civilization of the whole world. Uh, many things, uh, many great things started in the Middle East, in, in Mesopotamia in particularly, and we, our people live there for thousands of years. That is our homeland, and we cannot just give it up because some terrorists are trying to uh, drive us out of there. We will not make them succeed in their mission. Uh, we are calling upon our people all the time to stay in our homeland, to uh, be patient a little bit. I know it's difficult. I know they are making a lot of sacrifices, but we have to, uh, to uh, be patient and to endure what's happening so that hopefully at the end we'll be rewarded. How do you account for the birth of such kind of terrorism in Syria? Has it something to do with the resentment of a group of people towards the administration? Or is it just a result of mixing religion with politics? I believe there are groups who are using religion and they are uh, doing, uh, uh, perpetrating violence in the name of religion. So I would not blame all Muslims for this. I would not actually blame Muslims for that at all. I blame these people who are using religion because the victims are not only Christians, they are Muslims too. Uh, mosques have been destroyed, uh, imams have been hanged on the walls of mosques, on the doors of mosques. So it's not against, specifically against Christians, but we are targeted because of our religion. We are always an easy target. So um, what's happening in Syria, I don't believe has anything to do with some people not happy with the government or with it and that. It has everything to do with, uh, with uh, fanaticism. It has everything to do also with the international uh, policies. I, I cannot tell you that there is a plan to destroy Syria, but what's happening is Syria, Syria is being destroyed and Iraq is being destroyed. Uh, is there a plan to divide the, these countries into smaller uh, entities? Some analysts say uh, that the U.S. involvement in Syria and Iraq, the beginning, helped these antisocials to grow to an extent. Unfortunately, we did not see until recently any intervention from the United States and European countries to stop this violence in Syria. Uh, on the contrary, everybody knows, the whole world knows, that uh, some of these terrorist groups have been supported by Western powers and have been armed by regional powers and funded by regional powers. There are regional countries in the region who are funding uh, L uh, ISIS, Daesh. There are countries who are uh, buying oil from Daesh. They are supporting them indirectly. And uh, only recently the Americans and others are uh, uh, bombarding the ISIS uh, uh, group, uh, groups and uh, c uh, camps in Syria and Iraq. But I hope and pray that the United States of America and the coalition will work with the Syrian government together so that together they, will def they may defeat Daesh and other terrorist groups. And I made this appeal also to the President of the United States himself when we met with him last September. I, I told him, I asked him, since you are uh, fighting against ISIS and the Syrian government is fighting also, why don't you coordinate and work together uh, to that end? But uh, I think they have another industry in that. They are not interested in, with uh, Bashar al-Assad, I think. I don't believe Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, uh, as a person is, is the problem or is the cause of this. Uh, I, be, uh, I believe Bashar al-Assad can be and will be um, part of the solution of what's happening there if they work together. Uh, we know there were elections in Syria and he won by, by, by great uh, majority and uh, so we are hoping Syria 
of the future will be uh, a better Syria than the past. There were many mistakes by the regime in the past, and there's still some mistakes even now, and no country is uh, perfect in its administration or its uh, empl uh, employment of democracy or anything else. Even India, the, greatest, uh, the largest democracy in the world, there are some mistakes, there are uh, p political games going on. As you said, uh, US is saying that uh, they will put an end to this ISIS threat soon. But day by day, we are getting new visuals of heads rolling, that of innocent people. Do you think that this is an easy task for the US and its allies? Uh, we should not forget that uh, Saddam Hussein and his regime were brought down in a matter of days, in a matter of days. Um, Libya and Gaddafi uh, was brought down and the country was invaded and the regime was changed and in a matter of weeks, probably you know, less than six months. So if there is will, real will and uh, determination to uh, fight ISIS and get rid of it, I think that can happen sooner than what's happening now. Uh, we hope um, that will is there. And the Sea Holiness feel that there should be a united move from the Christian leaders also. Uh, Christian leaders have to be together. They have to be united in their uh, prayers uh, for the whole world, for peace in the world, and they have to be united in, uh, uh, in sending a message, a strong message to the Christian world, a uh, message of unity, and of, uh, of support and solidarity. We need the Christian leaders throughout the world, uh, beginning with the Pope, the, His Holiness the Pope in the Vatican, all the Western churches and the Eastern churches. They have to come out together and to show some support for the Christians in the Middle East. Sometimes the Christians in the Middle East feel that they are abandoned by their uh, uh, brothers and sisters in the West. Uh, we want to see more action, even if it's symbolic, we want to see that from the West, from the Christian in the West. Religious intolerance is becoming a great threat in India too, especially for the minorities. Would you like to react on that? I believe India has always been a, an example of, of tolerance and of co peaceful coexistence. And I hope and pray that will continue. Now, um, of course, this uh, uh, phenomena of fanaticism, extremism, uh, exclu uh, these are global. They are not local anymore. Uh, the internet, the uh, communications, uh, bring the message of these people to every home, in every country, in every village. India cannot uh, be an exception. People in India are listening and watching, and now there are always uh, extremist people on, in all religions and on all sides, and some people may embrace this kind of uh, uh, ideologies and they may try to get involved and that's unfortunate I hope and pray the Indian people who have been living together in their diversity for for many uh, centuries they will continue to recognize the value of this kind of uh, uh, tolerance and uh, peaceful coexistence and they will do their best to uh, uh, prevent the young people especially from embracing such uh, such dangerous ideologies now coming back to Kerala, mm. the dispute in Syrian Orthodox Church still continues. How will your holiness address that issue? Is there still a chance for a reconciliation and a lasting peace? I believe there is a chance. There is there's always going to be a chance for peace and reconciliation in our church. After all, we are member of the same church and families in Kerala uh, on both sides are uh, you know, are blood relations and they have so many um, occasions to be together to uh, both uh, happy and sad occasions and we cannot uh, we cannot block our ears from hearing the cry of the people who are thirsty for peace in the church and we will work we will do our best to bring peace peace that is uh, that brings dignity to everybody that uh, uh, respects everybody and that uh, is accepted by everybody uh, I believe it is possible yes still there is a chance for an open discussion I think the time will come when we will have to uh, to take every measure possible to bring peace um, there should be eventually open discussion about it and uh, with mutual respect and with uh, uh, with agreement and uh, we as uh, the patriarchate we always welcome the initiatives 
uh, for peace in, in India. And we will uh, also take initiatives whenever possible. And uh, but everything has to be locally here agreed upon. And uh, the people in Kerala should uh, uh, reconcile at the end because we, as patriarchate, we feel that uh, we are the, the church's spiritual mother uh, for everybody. Now the children have to uh, sit together with the. Uh, directions and with the blessing of the mother and with the cooperation of the mother church to work together towards lasting peace. But uh, how can your holiness convince the bishops and the laymen here and take them into confidence in this matter? I don't have to convince them. They are all convinced of the need of peace. Nobody is against peace. Eh? But there are certain uh, concerns. Uh, some of them are very legitimate concerns that should be taken into consideration. We have to pray over this matter and we have to sit down and discuss it with all uh, openness, frankness, and to see what's best for the people, what's in the best interest of the faithful of uh, Melankara. But still there is no change in the stand of Catholicos. He believes that uh, the initiative should come from this side. Again, I believe that every one of us, all sides, have to come up with initiatives and to meet somewhere. And I welcome uh, uh, initiatives from any side. And, uh, and as the Patriarch of Angel, also I have duty and responsibility to, uh, uh, to encourage and to work for peace in the church. So we'll all work together. It's not one side's uh, responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility to bring peace to the church. There was some news in the media that uh, there is some difference of opinion among uh, Your Holiness and his beatitude, Basilius Thomas I. Would you like to comment on no, the, Certainly there is no difference of opinion. There may be a different approach, but uh, uh, his beatitude, the Catholicos, more Basilius Thomas I, who has been leading the church uh, here, the so-called Jacobite uh, faction, uh, for many uh, decades, uh, he has done great things for the church here and his sacrifices are uh, uh, are very much appreciated and uh, I believe he has wisdom and he has experience in this uh, and anything we do his beatitude will be part of it so um, we will work together with his beatitude with all the bishops to bring a peaceful solution to the to the crisis that we have here. It is a crisis because the people are suffering and we want to put an end to the suffering of the ordinary people, the love, peace-loving uh, peace people of Malankara. Syrian Orthodox Church has been very active in ecumenical activities. Uh, what are Your Holiness's plans to go on with ecumenism, especially in, with regard to the Catholic Church? Our relationship with the uh, with all the churches have been very cordial and very uh, fruitful and with the Vatican we have had a long tradition of, uh, of dialogue and of uh, respect and um, uh, cordial relationship. Uh, my predecessors, uh, the two uh, former predecessors, the, the late Patriarch Morganatius Jacob III and uh, his, uh, the late Morganatius Zakia the first, both uh, paid visit to the Vatican and his only the Pope paid visit to our Patriarchate. And I intend also to continue this tradition. I'm actually uh, planning to pay a visit to the Vatican uh, later this year and to uh, sign an agreement, uh, and a, a common declaration with his only the Pope. And uh, we continue to be active in all uh, dialogues that are happening uh, with the Vatican, with the Anglican world, with the world within the World Council of Churches, with the Reformed Churches, and of course with the uh, Oriental Orthodox Church and the Eastern Orthodox Churches. So we are um, active on all sides and will continue to do that because, because we believe that uh, unity of the church uh, is, uh, is not only uh, a desire of the people, it's a desire of God. Jesus, our Lord, prayed for the unity of his church, and we have to work for it. And Your Holiness is beyond the progressive stance taken by Pope Francis on various issues. I tend to, uh, to admire, I really admire uh, His Holiness Pope Francis in many things that he is doing, in many initiatives that he is taking, and in the new approach, he is approaching things and uh, the way that things are run in the Vatican and in the Catholic Church. I have great hope that this Pope, we will be an inspiration for generations, especially for the young generation, and I am hoping we will see uh, people coming back to the church, especially in Europe and in America. The young people will come back when they see good leadership, uh, leadership that is uh, uh, inspirational to them. To see Holiness feel that uh, women should be given more uh, priorities in the church. 
Uh, women are uh, an essential part of our society. They make up uh, more than three quarters of the society. And in church also, uh, Christianity, from since the beginning, um, gave dignity to women and uh, gave them uh, certain rules in the church. I mean, don't forget uh, the first uh, apostles who preached the good news of the resurrection were women. And Jesus appeared to Mary first. and. Uh, uh, they were following Jesus all the time and uh, serving him and listening to him. And I believe in our church today also women uh, have to, given, to be given uh, their place in the church. Now their place doesn't mean they have to be in every uh, 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 area of ministry in the church. We, as we know, uh, ministry of priesthood, special priesthood, uh, was given only to the apostles and I don't believe, uh, at least in our Orthodox churches, that we will see women priests very soon. But uh, uh, otherwise they are teaching in the churches, in the Sunday school, they are serving in the Holy Liturgy, they are doing uh, charity work and uh, um, at least in the Middle East they are also on the church uh, committees. I'm hoping they are here also in Kerala on the church committees. If not, they should be on the church committees. <laughs> but uh, uh, eventually, the role of women uh, in any church uh, also depends on the culture that we live in because we don't f we should not forget that the church is a reflection of the society we live in. No matter how noble, how uh, uh, great the teachings of Christianity and of the Bible are, but then our faith is, uh, uh, is embodied and manifested in the society that we live in. So that also has to do with how women are uh, uh, given um, their rights in the church. Thank you very much for joining us, Your Holiness. Thank you. I also take this opportunity to thank all the workers in Manorama News, Manorama TV, and all those who are behind the cameras and the viewers. Manorama is one of the leading channels, as I know, in Kerala, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I, many times I myself uh, flip channels and f look for Manorama to uh, thank you for having me on your TV and ask the Lord to bless you, all the workers, and uh, wish you all uh, the best in your uh, professional um, covering of news and of journalism. May God bless you. Thank you.